Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our brother. This is the translation of that message that he sent to me. The translation reads like this. I'm not sure what made me start writing this. Maybe it is guilt, though I have tried to bury that deep inside, or maybe it is fear. Fear that what I have done will eventually catch up to me. That the things I have been a part of will take something from me, just like they are taken from the dead. My name is Daniel Mawere, not his real name. And for the past 12 years, I have been working at a mortuary location hidden. Most people, they think that working around the dead is disturbing. But for me, it is just another job. It is just another job. At least it is paying me well. The first time when I got a job working in the mortuary, like I was really scared. This was through one of my auntie who had been working for this other very big mortuary. Most of the people, they do know it. So I started working there and I could not sleep at night. But there were these other sleeping tablets that they used to give us whilst we were working there. But as time went on, that was when I got used. And then I was hired at first to tell you the truth, at the place where I am working, it used to be a fly-by-night mortuary. We used to target those ones that would have had their relatives die at different hospitals. And then we will convince them to let us take care of their dead relatives for a cheaper price. So most of the people, since they were poor, they would never question a lot of things about how we used to run our mortuary. But now it is legit because the owner, he made a lot of money. But at first, it was just a fly-by-night mortuary. By then, I was already someone who was used to it. We used to go as if we were smuggling. We will take some dead bodies from different hospitals because we will not be having proper paperwork so everything was being done through corruption and then when we got legit i had made so many contacts because like when you are smuggling things you need to have your own contacts of healers who were assisting us so that we won't get stopped by the police and searched and we and then we'll, they will see that we have a dead body and we have no proper documentation because the papers will still be processed through another mortuary and we are, we had other people that were working at that mortuary and they would process the papers without their management knowing so it will take a couple of hours even a day but we would have to bring the dead body into our mortuary making the relatives to believe that indeed our operation was an was a legitimate operation that we were running but i have seen some things that can make most of the people to have sleepless nights but now death does not scare me at all it used to but not anymore the first time when i saw a body was when i was 16 my father passed away suddenly and i was the one who found him since then it feels like death has been a part of my life as if death chose me and when i am in the mortuary i'm not even scared i can even eat whilst i'm getting ready to clean up a dead body like it is nothing my work at the mortuary is not what keeps me up at night no what haunts me is what i have done whilst i am on duty it started innocently enough. Remember those contacts that I had of traditional healers. There was one, one who told me that he had contacts with other healers who wanted something that is very special. You see, in Zim, especially in the rural areas, deep in the rural areas, people, they do believe in traditional healers and they believe that these healers, they can communicate with the ancestors, heal the sick, and manipulate the spirits of the dead, making them to become like topologies. It is part of our culture. We cannot deny it is a part of who we are, but not all healers are good. Some they deal in things that should never be touched, in rituals that cross a line of morality. I met one of those healers in 2016. I'll just call him Namo, not his real name. He was not like the other healers that I had met before. Like he did a lot of things that you are not supposed to do. Like one night after a long shift at the mortuary, I was sitting outside. I was totally exhausted. That was when he called me. When he called me, he asked me if I was on duty on that night. And I said, yes, I am on duty. 
He said that I want you to work with me. I want to give you at least 200, 200 US dollars right now. If I can come there, there is something that I need to use for a ritual. And that client of mine is coming tomorrow. Can I drive to the mortuary? But then actually it was like he was God sent because already there was this other woman whom I had been lasting after for a very long time. So she said, for you to spend a night with me, you need to give me something. She was a married woman and she had said that at least she needed 100 US dollars. So already I was planning to go and give her the 100 US dollars. Then the other 100 US dollars, I'll give it to my wife, maybe 80. Then the 20, I would use it to buy some things that I wanted. And then the man came. When he came, that was when he asked me if it was possible for me to go and get the water. If I had bathed any dead body that night, then that water that I had used to bath the bodies, he wanted it at least two liters, he said. And here's the 200 US dollars. I took the 200 US dollars and when I was about to walk back, into the mortuary that was when he said no 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 don't you know that you are not supposed to enter into a mortuary where there are dead bodies well least we have money and if you do that most people they don't know that a spirit of poverty will start to follow you so from that day until now when i am in the mortuary i make sure that i do not carry cash with me for it will bring bad luck to you and then i went in there took some water and then I gave him the water and he said that I can make you to become a very rich man. All that I need is that water, Daniel. So from that day until now, that is all that I did. Collect the water you, that I used to bath the bodies filled with soap sometimes with the remnants of the dead. And I hand it over to different traditional healers. And you know, the more that you start doing this, the more that you get used to it. One day, I returned back home. I had, I had a 20-liter bucket that was full of water. My wife then asked me, what was this water for? And I did not want to tell my wife the truth. But since she is my wife, I just sat down with her and I told her the truth. So this water, like there is a trend right now. You know, there are those street vendors that sell meat in the streets. So they are the ones mostly that use this water so that they can have a lot of clients. What they do is that they go to this other traditional healer. He is the one who buys the water in bulk. Then he packages the water and sells it to the street vendors and they come and they buy it from him. When they are busy selling their meat, the chicken, the beef, the pork, the rations, the sausages, then they will sprinkle a little bit of the water, sprinkling the, a little bit of the water. So it's like when there is a funeral in the area where you are staying, it's an obvious case that you have to go there even if you do not want. That is why some people like you just say, ah, today I want to go and buy some sausages. The reason as to why you would want to buy those sausages, you won't even understand. You will just go there and buy them. It is because the water from the mortuary that would have been used to wash a dead body would be calling you. I have been doing this and I was able to buy myself a beautiful home at the place where I am now staying with my wife. And this is my own confession, Brother Nashi. I do feel bad about it when I am washing a dead body, knowing that this dead body that I am busy washing, I am going to take some water and sell it to a traditional healer but what can we do with the economy we just need to hustle and this is part of hustling so i believe dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our brother hoping that you were able to understand the translation strange things indeed they do happen in this world